So what we're doing at the moment is to try to look into um, nested loops and to use that, the example we want to use is a for loop example. So if we have one for loop and then we count to, let's see out column, for example, which is the actual value of the column. And then we run it. So it's just gonna um, print out something from zero to, um, to 10. And I did I plus plus, nobody told me I was wrong. Column plus plus. So it prints out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, um, all the way to 10. We can print um, some space after the first one. So let's print out some space. And we say, when we take, when we take zero alone, we want to count all the way to 10. And then when we take one, we want to count all the way to 10. So for each of these numbers we take, we want to count to 10, which means that currently the column is zero. We want to count all the way to 10. Then when we finish, we, the column should increase to one. Then we count all the way to 10 and do it again. So to do that, let's, let me open the scope of this as a block. When we step inside the for loop and we print out the first column, we want to have another for loop that will print the row, which is um, row for int row equals zero to row less than or equal to 10, row plus plus. And again, we want to see out the row. You notice that we have a for loop within a for loop. So, which is just basically a loop within a loop. That's what is called a nested loop. So what will happen is initially column will be zero. When it's column is zero, print out zero. Then we'll run row zero, um, from zero to 10, and then it will print out all of that. Then column will be one, all the way, repeat exactly the same thing all the way to the end. Let's try, we may need a new line after this finishes. So for each of them, want to print a new line, but let me print the new line after the column. Let's see how it looks like. So we notice it has zero and then it prints zero, one, two, three, four, five, which is the first column, then the second column, then the third column. Actually, we should swap the rows in the column. I think it's a lot better anyway. And the third column, another thing. So I just want to swap the name of row and column. I think And that should take care of it. So we've got some things, not that beautiful, but it makes sense. And if we want each time we print out the row value to, we can have it in a table form. So gradually going towards a table. Something like that. We've already declared row and column as integers, so we didn't need to declare them again. Let me add the Z dimension. So we didn't need to declare this again, <coughs> but we can have Z. Then the whole printing becomes 
a bit out of scope or out of order, a bit fun. A lot more interesting. <laughs> yeah, but we didn't end the line. It could have ended the line here. But it's just going to go a bit more down and other things. So let me cut. Um, let me just hide this. And for all right. So sometimes when you're writing code, you want to read from a file, or you want to write the results to a file. So you can have something like um, when you do Control O on a Word document to open a file, you're basically reading from that file or importing that file to your software. So we want to look at data storage, which is file input file IO, where input and output. And you can think of various scenarios, things like if your code stores data in a database somewhere, but that's different, this database plugin. But this one, you just simply want to store the files locally, or you want to open certain files locally. So we're looking at how do we um, cover that. So to get that resolved, um, Basically, we can use um, files instead of keyboard or monitor screen for programs inputs or to get the data, just as it's been explained. And um, that's, you can use uh, that data to run between programs. But what are the key steps that we follow when we are doing file IO? So first thing, something like one, you need the file opened. So to open the file, and then two, you use um, the files. So if you open file, you, you use it. And to, um, to use it, you're thinking of where you're reading from or where you're writing to or both, which is um, read, write. Okay, then when you are done, you need to remember to close the file. Otherwise, it will just um, store the content in memory and it will keep that content open. And the more you have open to, the more likely your computer is, is to slow down. When you have things open visually that you can see, it's usually easier to know that you need to close something. But if your file, your software has loaded a file in buffer in memory, you do not necessarily see it as an open file. And if you don't close it in code, you're likely to end up with um, high memory usage of um, your code not being very optimal. So what are the keywords that we use? We've already used the string header file. Do we remember? Is that a yes? Fahim. Fahim. Should I mark Fahim not attended? Right. So we've already dealt with the string um, header file. So header file, basically, if you include the header file, it will give you access to the functions that have been pre-created for you. So the functions that allow you to open the files and then close the files. So to do that, you include the F stream, right? Which is a file stream, streaming from a file in your header file, right? And from that F stream, um, F stream header, you've got other options that you can use as well. So you've got an input file stream, which is the IF stream for to get an input from the file. And then you've got the output um, file stream, so which helps you to write to the file, right? And then you've got the F stream, which is read write. So it's input from and then output to the file options, okay? Then of course you can define the file stream. So if we've got this allow us, is think of it as a data type, you know, the way we did, we do int X, int Y. So when you have these classes, I'm just sort of, changing slightly from data type to classes, but if you think of it that way. So when you have these classes, you need to create an object of that particular class. So you, th you think of it as you're creating a variable of a data type, for example. So this is just the name, okay? So this is just the name of the object. So it's basically, you have different types of class. So the input stream, meaning that we are getting data into it, and then we say, we have an input stream and that in input stream, we want to call it in file. And then we can have an output stream, output stream and then for that particular object or that particular instance or that particular type of output stream, we want to call it out file.
So steps taken to open um, open a file. Basically, you create a link between the file name. So you need to create a link between the file name. And what that means is that if you're using something like um, S code, V code, or Visual Studio or anything, you need to give the full path to the file. If the file is not in the same folder as the, um, the executable that you've created, it needs to be able to find the file. So um, the computer needs to know where the file is. So it's not just the file name, but also the full path to it. And then also um, you create that between the objects that you have created. So we created an object called in file, um, in file and we created another object called out file, which is like int x or x and then y. So to do that, we use our in file and then we say in file, which is the object, we're creating that link. So open, which is object for input stream, open, and what file are we opening? We are opening inventory dot that. Or you can say now put stream. So basically an out file, and then we open, and then we, we output into a file called report.test. You notice the data type is also that that we are outputting to it. Do you have any question for me so far? If you're happy for me to continue, please type okay in the chat window. Thanks, Inshallah. Okay, so then you say the output file will be created if necessary. And of course, if an existing, uh, is, uh, if the file exists, it will just be, be erased for the new one to replace it. And then the input file must exit for um, open, um, for the file open to work. So if you, of course, you must have the file to open it. Am I doing right? Why is it right? That'll work. And somebody's microphone is on. So when you open a file, you do not know whether it's opened or not. And hence you can do a test on it to check whether it's open. And that's where you say, if, of course, in this case, if it is not open, then you copy out file open um, failure, which means that if it is open, uh, in this case, without the not, in file will return true. In that case, then, of course, that this will be skipped, right? And also, you can use um, the fail uh, member function, which, which is just a function of that particular object we created, which was in file, we created that earlier. So in this particular case, we can have the out file where we simply print um, to it. So because we can use the, this is like the C out, isn't it? So similar to the C out um, option. Whilst this is like the C in, which is the, the pipe symbol for C in as well. So to get from an output or to print to an output or to send data to an output, you write to it as if you are doing the um, the C out. Um, so with that, and we will just print inventory report to that particular file. Then to read from the file is basically like C in, where in this case we copy to a variable called partner, and then also we copy to another variable and other variables as well. So it's kind of I think because we've been doing C out a lot, um, this is quite quite familiar with it. And of course, the stream extraction operator, it does return true when the value was successfully read. If it wasn't, then of course it returned false. And you can use that for a test function as well. And of course, which simply says, oh, you can also test this using a while loop to check it continuously, as long as a number is valid and then you keep reading from that number, you keep sending data to it as well. So things we are familiar with, but the most important thing that I'll say at this point is you need to remember to close the file because otherwise you use up too much memory with so many files open. So if you do open a file, make sure you've closed it before you code it, or if you also um, write into it, make sure that you close it as well. So don't wait for the operating system to close it for you because you will be limited by the, you may be limited by the number of files you can open and also the buffering or in terms of storage will be uh, too much as well. So 
anyway, um, you can get the user to specify the file name. We've already done like, like the password entry thing where we play with string. The same thing, you can pass the string as the name of the file that needs to be opened and we work with it as well. Then we've got some codes that do not necessarily relate to, uh, or that's relate to, but we will still write our own version of the code in a second. And then we have um, for the um, dealing with the strings or opening the file, there are other options, which is the old C format that can or cannot be used as well. So a key thing here is that, well, we've done the objects in terms of um, opening with the file name code that we would deal with. We will see another version of opening with the um, string file name as well. We've already done the break continue and then the loop aspect um, last week. So which means we are about to run. I'm now recording. So we, we say see out, enter the file name. Thanks for bringing it to my attention. So basically what we have is we've included the string um, header and then we've also library and then we've also included the upstream library. Then we have an input stream because we want to read from a file and the file we want to read from, that means we've created an object, which is like doing an int while in int text. But in this case, we have a class called input um, IF stream and create an object called input file. Then we also create a string called file name because we want to use that as a file name and the number we'll be using um, later. So we say enter file name and then we put that there, and we wait for something and then we see in the file name. At the moment, it's just a string called file name. So let me run it to see if it gives me any errors. So it doesn't give any error yet, but I say hi for file name and then that works. So no error yet. So we have the hello world, but we deal with hello world later. So anyway, let me delete hello world for now. Okay, so at this point, let's say we're gonna get a file called file name later, right? So I'll just say, um, I'll just say input file, which is the file that we created, the object we created, the input file, and I will do a dot open. And what I want to put in the open brace is gonna be the file name that we have just opened, right? That's gonna be the file name. At the moment, we don't have a file attached yet. So we will think about it, how to upload the file later. So I just say, open the file. And then also I will have, um, open the file. And after we open the file, at the moment, we do not have it yet. So we, after we open the file, we want to do some check, right? So we just say, if the input file, which is the object the, of the actual file we have opened, so it means we check to see if it works. Then we just say, um, let me comment it to say, if the file successfully opened, process it, right? So you have if input file and I have read the numbers from the file and display. So we want to read the numbers from the file and display them. So why, how do we do that? We say while, and then we say while the file is um, open, so while input file, um, then we want to read um, number, right? Yeah? So to read the number and then we want to display them. So this, this read is the same as the C in, right? Or we just do C in. Then we do C out, and then we do number that we've read, and then we end the line. So I'm heavily commenting this for a reason because afterwards you will catch up with it, right? So then I close the file. And to close the file, it will be the object name again. Input file, I've probably made written two different input full. When did I write that? <laughs> input file. And then I want to close it. 
So that is for the if. So that's if the file is available else, which is if it is not available. Then I want to copy out error opening file. Slash n. Um. So there's a is. So you have a question, sir. Mm -hmm. Is there also um else if on C plus plus? You mean L if? Yes. Yeah, if, if if else or else if we've already gone through that as well, but we can have um. If column equal to five, do something. See out column equal or uh, cool, yeah. I can do put else if column equals, that's what you're talking about, 10. Print out cool 10, for example. Then eventually else, yeah? To cover all the scenario, print out something. And it will work, I'll just compile it and then you see that we have no errors. Yeah, in that case in um, Python, it would be elif. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, so you do have if I was in this, let's see if that's right. Right. So let's run this and we are expecting an error. Can you see my screen though? Yes, sir. So if we run this, we are expecting an error somewhere. Um do, 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 do. oh, that's not the error we are expecting. This is one is our own syntax error. <laughs> Let's run it again. So enter file name, let's put it my file. It says error opening file because we have not included any file called my file, right? The IO stream, which we are familiar with, we create a string because we want the user to input the file name, that would be a string. Then we include the, um, the file header or file stream header file to give us access to the libraries, yeah? Yes. Sir. Then we, we want to read from a file, so we use the input stream. If we want to write to a file, we'll use the output stream. So now this is an object, it's a class. You think of it as a data type, the way we have an integer data type and we say int x, right? Yes. Sir. Okay, so because it's a class, we just use that to create an object. If it was a data type, we're just using it to create a variable like integer, a uh, variable of integer uh, of, of type X. In this case, we are creating our own object. We gave it that name of type input file stream. So it gives us access to the functions in the input file stream. And then the string that, which is the file name and then we have created a number. So this file that we are expecting to read, we read numbers from it. So we prompt the user to enter a file name and then we take in that file name, which is a string, then we go back to our input file stream, which is um, the object we created, which is an IF of type IF stream. And then we, do, we, we use the function, the feature open feature. Then we use that to open the file name we created. So we check to see if that input file stream, this would return true if the file was successfully open. And then if, it, if not, this code will run, which is what we have just gone through. Then we are saying if the file successfully opens and we say, whilst there is data in there, read it because this symbol is like the C in symbol, what we use after the C in. So we read that data and then we just want to print out that data straight away. And when we have finished, 
at the end of the while statement, when, when we are finished um, reading all the data, we close the file, yeah? And I've got a file open, hopefully I can save it. So I'll do save us. Save it, it's gonna to try to go everywhere. Uh, let's see, I'll save it, not onto my document, onto my desktop, and I want to call it file name. Or let's call it my file. Okay, so I print save, and I want to enter some numbers, right? Some random numbers. in there and I will save it as well. Then afterwards, I will close the file. So I wanna go in here, do you see upload file? So you see upload there and I click upload file and I go to my desktop and I wanna search for my file. Actually, let me rename my file. I'll go to my desktop, rename it from there. I think the, the, file, to accept the, file, the file remains source code has to be in the same folder. For the, oh, okay, yeah, okay. Or, you, or you can provide the full link to it. Yeah, yeah, the full link. I reference it in the link, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, you know, it. when you type C slash all those kind of things, that it can find yes, it. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I think the rich text include other things. You can see it's included some backslashes and things we don't like. I don't have time to edit that. So let's do it. I'm just using Word and then I'm just saving it as um, plain text. It's a lot easier and I'll call it my file, my test file, or my, my file two, let's call it my file two, dot test. I'm gonna open my file test, my file two. Okay, that looks, that looks a lot better. It's not inserted any funny thing, right? Um, so we've uploaded that. Let's run it again. And it was my file2.test. And you notice that it's read the contents and printed them out in the way that I wanted it. Yeah? Like, should we create another file rather than the main CPP and like enter the name of the file and the, and the because, code that we wrote? Right, I will, I will explain to you why I'm uploading this file onto the online compiler. We are just so lucky that the developers of this online compiler factored in the fact that um, we've got input and output file stream. If you are using a dedicated IDE, for example, you, you either put the file in the same folder as the um, your working folder, or you create, so if it's a video file, you can open a video file, for example, you can write a software to open a video file um, by using the input and output file stream. But in this case, we want to print test to print out. So I have used Microsoft Word to create a file that I save on my desktop, and I upload that file to the server. So for the, as long as the, the file sits on their server, you can do IFStream to open it. So that is where the upload comes from. So the upload was to upload to the server. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So create the file separately, upload to the server because it makes it takes you through the whole experience of, um, of doing this particular exercise. And what I'm going to do is I'll download my code now. 